Mark Twain, Shakespeare, or neither. Here's the first one. All that glitters is not gold. Who said that? <laughs> Who said it? All that glitters is not gold. Mark Twain, Shakespeare, or neither. Let me. Ah, 43% of you said Shakespeare, and you are right. The bard. It was him. Okay, here's another one. Uh, he was such a poet. Okay, ready? Lies! Damned lies! And statistics. <laughs> Mark Twain, Shakespeare, or neither. Who said it? Lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> oh, 53% of you got it right, Mark Twizzle. Nobody's ever called him that in the history of the earth. Mark Twizzy, Mark Twain, y'all. Yeah, his name is Shakespeare, we're so much alike. Only a couple more seconds till we go. Seventy-five got it right. Who the heck picked the card? So I, I think y'all just be doing that because you got levels and you know you could get it wrong. You just trying to be silly. Ah, uh, oh my God, Kim, you're being so annoying. Whose jeans are those? Those are cute jeans. Your cute jeans. They're my jeans. No, you are cute jeans, right? That was the Kardashian quote. Who was that? That was one of them. Ah, uh, there's so many. Anyway, question number two. Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy are characters from what novel? The Sound and the Fury, The Old Man and the Sea, or Pride and Prejudice? Lock it in, lock it in. Because you got one second left. If you've never seen Colin Firth walk out of a lake as Mr. Darcy, you haven't lived. But you can also just read the book and imagine it for yourself in Pride and Prejudice. 59,163 in the place to be. I'm moving on to question number three. Congratulations. Y'all doing it. Question two. We start out easy. But make sure you got some extra lives, okay? Because it's smarter day. It's reader day. There's going to be some tough questions coming at you. All right? So have an extra life in your back pocket so you can say, Bow, money flipper, how you like me now? I'm back in the game. What's up with it? Huh? You can say that to me. Yeah. Question number three. Here we go. Which of these books is by Virginia Woolf? Anna Karenina, Mrs. Dalloway, or Madame Bovary? All right, three classics with iconic female characters, but Woolf was neither Russian nor French. So, Mrs. Dalloway is the only choice. Oh yeah, 39,452 knew what to do. Question number four, knocking on your door. What the heck was that? There was a noise. I heard it. It sounded like a rattlesnake. <laughs> why would there be a rattlesnake? You know why? Because it's the internet, okay? Things just pop up and scare the crap out of me for no reason. I'm floating in cyberspace for crying out loud. Give me a break. Question number four, here we go. Which book is widely considered a favorite for the honor of great American novels? War and Peace, The Great Gatsby, or Pride and Prejudice? What's that gonna be? Oh, ha, ha. Were you tempted to tap Pride and Prejudice again? Mm -mm. Huh? Are y'all still thinking about wet Colin Firth, ain't you? Pervs. All right, the right answer here says great in the title. 
Yeah, and also, the other options here are Russian and British, respectively. Let's oh. hear it for Jay and the gang! Great Gatsby! Yeah! 40,949, got it right. It's time for my favorite part, for the children! I, 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 question five, question five. I, 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 question five. It's for the children. Here we go, Q5, y'all. Almost about what? Spies. Okay, any of these could be the foundation for a great book, right? And if you know a novel that has all three, please let me know immediately because I got to put it in my kit. John LeCar, XMI6. Was it M16? <laughs> MI6. Oh, I don't know. That's some British stuff. Okay, he tells you to write about spies. Basically, James Bond for nerds. And I spy a prize question on the horizon. 50,397 of you nailed it. Q6. Look a little something like this. Yeah. Get it right, and you have an option to take some coins or keep on playing. Here we go. The writer of which of these books said its chapters could be read in any order? Tropic of Cancer, Naked Lunch, or On the Road? I see original fridge poetry. Basically, just a series of literary snapshots. The answer is Naked Lunch, okay? Which makes you wonder. What is the best lunch outfit? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that's a savage question. Savage question song. Sorry, you got it wrong. Savage question song. That's a savage question song. Hit him with the shoulder. Yeah, all right. Oh, 109 coins going out to 16,806 players. Five questions until the next prize. Are you going to take it or are you going to stay and play? The choice is yours. Don't worry, I won't feel no type of way if you die. If you know, if you decide to leave, I just be like, okay, I love you. See you tomorrow. Congratulations, Gregory 17, Sam Shanku, Lucy Lock, The Greek, uh, Drew 0020, Beebs, Smarty, just to name a few. You guys just got 109 coins, Richard. We got five questions until the next prize, the next opportunity for maybe one of y'all to do what they just did. Yeah. Q7. Which of these books was not first published under a pen name? Withering Heights, The Age of Innocence, or The Bell Jar? What's it going to be? Lock it in. All right. Sometimes pen names stick. Like George Eliot and uh, Elena Ferrante. Other times, no. No one thinks Ellis Bell and Victoria Lucas wrote Wuthering Heights and The Bell Jar instead of Emily Bronte and Sylvia Plath. Hmm. The Age of Innocence. Woo-woo-woo. 12,800. Got it right. Come on now, bookworms. Don't do a decimal of the system. What does that mean? I don't know. My brain just be spitting words out sometimes. Okay, if you made it this far, you got some knowledge in you. All right? Yeah, you spent a lot of time in the library as a kid because your aunt was supposed to pick you up from school and she was running a little late, so you had to walk by yourself in the rain to the library and just sit there and the books were your only friends. <laughs> that got really sad. Okay, that's not my life. Yes, it is. Here we go. Point multipliers. Treat yourself. You got it? Good. You hear me talk about it every day. Stop playing. Here we go. Question number eight. Hope you're feeling great. Yeah. Nope. You don't even have to bring Nate out. Let him, let him stay. He's sleeping. He's so tired. You know what? Do it. Let's... Nate! Ah! My number. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. Which of these novels mentions the fictional Red Book of Westbrook? The Lord of the Rings? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 
the Red Book of Westmarch is the fake book that J.R.R. Tolkien made up as his source for both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. The first in universe mention is in the foreword to Lord of the Rings. Oh my gosh! Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Bet y'all glad you got them levels now. 5,948 of you are moving on. That was pretty savage. Question number nine. A lot of extra lives getting dropped right now. Here we go. Okay, okay. Y'all ready for this? Q9. In Nabokov's novel, Pale Fire, the first line of the anonymous poem mentions what animal? Bird, butterfly, or cat? All right. Nabokov's bizarre and wonderful pale fire takes the form of literary notations on a poem, both by fictional writers. The poem pale, uh, pale Fire begins, I was the shadow of the waxwing slain. Mm. And waxwings Bird. are birds. I knew this mm. my whole life. I also had a feeling this would be another savage question. Savage question song. So you got it wrong. Savage question song. Who didn't know that a waxwing was a bird? This guy. Yes, I did. I'm just kidding. Of course I knew. I live in the internet. Oh, okay. Ooh, wow. Ha. <sighs> All right, here we go. I'm stalling because I'm trying to pronounce this name inside my head. Yeah, that's breaking the fourth wall. I just told y'all exactly what was happening. All right. Jumpa Lahiri won a Pulitzer for her collection of what? Short stories, personal essays, or poems. Y'all know my girl, Jumpa Lahiri. Jumpa Lahiri. Okay, uh, if you have a short attention span, you can still pick up Lahiri's acclaimed book, Interpreter of Maladies, for some short stories that only require you to focus for 20 minutes, Max. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Savage question song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage question song. That's a savage question song. Savage question. Uh, uh, savage question. All right. 4,914 of you. Go into another prize. Question number 11. All dogs go to heaven. Here we go. Q11. Colson Whitehead's the Underground Railroad reimagines the Underground Railroad as what? Actual railroad. Only in Canada. Or spaceships. Whitehead won the National Book Award and the Pulitzer in Fiction for his alternative history novel, imagining the Underground Railroad as an actual railroad. What's up, Colson? 5,671 of you got it right. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all are scratching your heads like, what? It wasn't an actual? No. It w in real life, it wasn't an actual railroad. Okay. 377 of you got. Oh, wait, no. My bad. That's the number of coins. 377 coins. Going out to 5,671 players. It's not my first day. What? You gonna take it? We got seven questions till the next prize. Make a choice. Oh, yeah. 3,199 players chose to take 377 coins. Still got 4,033 in the game. Shout out to ST Swift. Jay Pratt, Iskars, Zoomy's mom. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Question number 12. What's that smell? The title essay of Joan Didion's Slouching Towards Bethlehem is about what subject? The Manson family, San Francisco, hippies, or leaving New York City? Didion's famous essay about the Manson family is called The White Album. Her essay about New York is 
goodbye to all that. And her most famous essay about the hippies is slouching towards Bethlehem. San Francisco hippies, y'all. 1,536 of you nailed it. We're moving on to question number 13. Y'all ready for this? I know I am. Yeah. Happy Saturday, babies. Smarter day indeed. Here we go. The author of The Color Purple coined which term? Male gaze, womanist, or girl power? Okay, if there's a concept that you want to talk about, right? And it doesn't exist yet, you just invent a word for it. Alice Walker was an avowed feminist, and she coined the term womanist which specifically focuses on the experiences of women of color. 2070, got it right. Oh, boy, we're getting closer and closer to the prize. Let's go. Come on. Question number 14. Viet Thanh Nguyen's novel, The Sympathizer, was honored by a society for writers of what genre? Mystery, science fiction, or romance? Okay, it's hard to categorize the sympathizer in any genre. It's historical. It's spy fiction. It's a political thriller. But it was honored by the Mystery Writers of America with the Edgar Award for Best First Novel from an American Author. Oh, yeah, 1,809. Got it right. Mystery. Mystery. Y'all remember the movie Mystery Men? That was crazy. There was like superheroes, but they wasn't really super. It was, go watch it. Kale from all that thought he was invisible, but he was just naked. Question <laughs> number 15. Here we go. In which of these Kurt Vonnegut novels is his fictional alter ego, Kilgore Trout, not mentioned? Breakfast of Champions, Slaughterhouse Five, or Cat's Cradle? Kilgore Trout. Play on the name of the author Theodore Sturgeon isn't introduced until God bless you, Mr. Rosewater, which was published two years after Cat's Cradle. Cat's Cradle, y'all. 1,683 just did that. Question 15. We're moving on. You guys are smart. This is like a, the core bunch right here. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go the distance. I'm trying to give this money away. All right. Q16. Here we go. Which of these decades saw the most women win the Pulitzer Prize for fiction? 2000s, 1930s, or 1960s? What's it going to be? All right. Women writers basically dominate the bestseller list today, but in terms of prizes, the only decades that saw more women than men get Pulitzers was the 20s and 30s. The first decades of the award's existence... Cray cray! Oh my gosh! That's another savage question. Oh. Savage question song! Sorry you got it wrong! 571 of you did that. Sha boing boing then. Here we go, Q17. All right. Ooh, here we go. Gene Reese novel. Gene Reese's novel. Wide Sargasso Sea is a retelling of what classic novel? Middle March, Gone with the Wind, or Jane Eyre? Jane Eyre. All right. It's always fun to get a new perspective, right? And this book tells the story of Jane Eyre from the perspective of Mr. Rochester's first wife, which, if you read Jane Eyre, you already know how weird that story must be. 14,000. Is it Jane Eyre or Eyre? It looked like I am, but I'm pretty sure. Come on, somebody help me in the chat. What, is, what y'all say in the chat? Is it air or I am? What'd the chat say, Gabby? I can't see. I got my stigmatism acting up. <laughs> air? Oh, see? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, chat. Love you. <laughs> All right. 1,400 players. Moving on to question 18, the last prize before the jackpot, y'all. Let's get it. Oh, okay. Q18, current events caused Thomas Pynchon to change the an epigraph in Gravity's Rainbow to a quote by whom? A 
Augusto Pinochet, Neil Armstrong, or Richard Nixon. Oh, it's a lot of pensions and Pinochets. Woo! All right. If you've read this enormous book, let me know in the chat. The last section of his book initially quoted some beautiful lyrics from a, a Joni Mitchell song, but after Watergate broke, he changed it to a simple quote of Richard Nixon saying, what? 900 players just got question 18 right. Time to flip them some coins. 1,000 coins going out to 900 of you. Three questions until the jackpot. All you got to do is get through three more questions without getting anything wrong, and you can have some money. It's as simple as three more questions. 146 players chose to take a thousand coins. Shout out to Oi! Hey, Oi! Jay Sling, Pauline Ma, Marcos Jog, Napa 007, Zim Zalabim, Agostu, and Katie Kate. All right, let's go. Y'all ready for this? I know I am. Question 19. Which of these was not nominated the year Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man won a national book? To kill a mockingbird, east of Eden, or the old man in the sea? What's it gonna be? The class of 1952 was maybe the most stacked year ever for books you read in English class, right? Invisible Man, The Old Man in the Sea, East of Eden, but no Mockingbird, which lost the award in, was it, 61? Oh, my gosh, 120 people on it right now. Oh. Savage, babies. All good. All good. In the hood. Question 20. Here we go. <laughs> what anachronistic technology is referenced in Catch-22? Satellites, lasers, or Okay. In Catch-22, our boy Joseph Heller references IBM machines. One is responsible for the promotion of Major Major, in several places throughout the book, though, computers were not directly used in combat during World War II. Computers, 85 of you, marching along to the final question of the game. I don't know why I thought it was so many questions. All right, yeah, Q21. Wow! You did it. Yeah, yeah, you did it. You smart. That's my new question 21 song. All right. Question 21. For all the marbles, the title of J.D. Salinger's best known novel comes from a poem by Ezra Pound, Robert Burns, or W.B. Yeats. Look for the title of J.D. Salinger's best known novel and the poem, the author, who, who, who wrote the poem that it comes from? All right. Holden Miss Hears, a sung version of Robert Burns' poem, Coming Through the Rye. Through the Rye. Coming Through the Rye. <laughs> Woo! Holden Miss Hears, a sung version of Robert uh, Burns' poem, Coming Through the Rye. And that's where the title comes from. Good thing he Miss Hears, because the original version is quite dirty, actually. Robert Burns! 81 players just won HQ Trivia! Everybody got $12.35 and 2.7 million points. That's crazy. Trivia King P. Marocco. Daily Ready. Uh, Teti King. Johnson. <laughs> Joni. 
Congratulations to everybody. Y'all just did that. Ooh-wee. I've been your host, Matt Richards. Make sure you holla at your boy. Hit me up on the swoosh. Let's be friends. Goodbye and good night until we meet upon the morrow. Parting. Such sweet sorrow. Reader day. <laughs> 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 <laughs>